Okay, uh, good morning. See, uh, <coughs> today's lecture is titled Ship Motion in Regular Waves. Uh, earlier, we have uh, spoken about regular waves, we have followed that by irregular waves. Of course, before I go to that, I want to speak little more on Ill irregular sea still, which we did last class, but some carried over stuff I want to uh, continue. See, we mentioned that irregular sea is given by what is meant a spectrum. frequency domain energy spectrum looking like this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> it turns out I was just mentioning in last class that there are a large number of so called theoretical spectrum available. What does it mean? See, supposing you want to uh, uh, take statistics of waves in certain part of the ocean. Now, you cannot do it day to day basis. People have been taking this data for years, 30, 50, 100 years actually and they have been analyzing it based on you know uh, various time, various year, period, geographic location, etcetera. And it turns out that this follows, they found out a Rayleigh distribution. This I mentioned before, but the more important thing is that there have been some theoretical spectrum. It, it turns out that you can theoretically fit some curve to find out S omega if omega is given, which is known as theoretical spectrum, where S omega can be written as a function of H significant T. You can express some formulas of this spectrum if you know significant wave height and peak period, either you know one of them or two of them, Depend, there are number of actually uh, representation available. They call, uh, if it is only H s, it is called, you know, single parameter, if it is H s and T, double parameter, etcetera. See, if you look at the literature, there is a wide variety. I will only mention two of the spectrum that is commonly used by our profession, shipbuilding and offshore engineering, okay. But basically to know that if you knew a significant wave height, if you knew some kind of a model period, then one can find out what the curve is. So what happens, one goes to ocean, one has collected data and one has found out what is my significant wave height based on some uh, you know observations, some calculation. Then if you know the H s and if you know also the kind of peak period, you can use the formula to actually find out the curve. So a typical formula of this is we call, we can call ITTC spectrum, you know ITTC meaning International Towing Tank Conference spectrum, uh, a two parameter spectrum. This is most commonly used because this is supposed to represent an average sea all over the world. See, mostly when we do a ship, what happens is that the ship is mostly for ocean going all over the world. So, it must represent some kind of a, it must uh, uh, I mean uh, be able to travel in, in a wave which by description is an average kind of wave for all over the world, global wave, not you know a typical wave happening in one place. This is best represented by this spectrum. The formula for that is given as S omega equal to some, I do not remember where if I gave this formula last class. Then T1 is some kind of a period. Uh, see, T1 seem, turns out to be some period or T1 equal to 0 0.772 Tp. This is called peak period. What it means is that, see, if you knew Hs and if you knew Tp, you can find out what is S omega for various omega. It will turn out to be something like that. This is actually where the peak occurs. This is of course omega. So, this is my you can call omega peak 
which is equal to 2 pi by t peak, this is s omega. So, in other words, if you knew h s and if you knew t p, you can find out this, the frequency distribution of the wave, this is a, a typical ITTC spectrum. <coughs> okay. This looks like that, uh, now typically what happened uh, that if I was mentioning that wind speed goes high, then you expect larger waves to be generated. So, if wind speed goes up, then you expect significant wave height to go up. And typically, we describe the state of the sea by a parameter called sea state. This is not very well defined, but you know you use the word sea state 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, something like sea state say 2, 3 like that goes, it, it will imply h s equal to some ranges, it will imply t p is some ranges, there are some ranges there that if you say the ship should be capable of operating in up to sea state 4, that would imply that going to the table that it must be able to cater to significant wave error so much of t p so much. Now, typically what happened? lower sea state waves spectrum look like that as the sea test go, goes up it looks more like that. This is actually uh, this is lower sea state as the sea stage goes up the sea goes like this or as HS goes up it goes like this. What it means? When the wind is low you expect low energy so the area under that is low because area under that represent that significant wave height, it is less. What is more important is that you expect waves of smaller length to be excited more. So, it is spread like that. See, this is this wavelength is smaller than this wavelength because wavelength is inverse proportional to 1 by root over of frequency. Now, as the wind speed picks up, significant wave goes up and it goes like this. So, the, this, this spectrum has this peak period also because sometime it happened that depending on the location, you can have another spectrum of same uh, area, but having a peak may be slightly different. Okay. This is why, uh, you know, in single parameter spectrum, which has only H s, which will not have differentiated between the two, but in this two parameter, it fixes this point as well as the area under that. This is one of the most commonly used representation. Let us say, let me uh, put it in more simple terms, as far as we are concerned as a user, we do not worry about how oceanographers have collected the data. We assume that they have collected the data, that they are given as a spectrum and our job would be to use an appropriate spectrum and then tell that look my ship should be capable of operating in up to sea state 3 or 4 or 5. This is a typical spectrum, but there is one more spectrum that I want to mention, this is very common, it is called John Swap spectrum. This is actually a very famous uh, I mean project, joint north sea wave spec project. There was a project called joint north sea wave project. The reason I mention this is because in the, when the offshore industry started, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean uh, finding oil in north sea. Now, offshore structures are not moving from place A to place B, they are always in one point, mostly North Sea. So, there is no point of trying to uh, gather oceanographic data of Bay of Bengal and apply to North Sea. And it turned out North Sea is a more uh, violent ocean, the Atlantic is always known to be more violent ocean, you know. <coughs> there are much more accidents near Newfoundland and upper North Atlantic than any other place. <coughs> now, this project, when they did it, they they came up with a formula for that. I am not writing the formula, but uh, typically that formula will show that this, this spectrum for the same energy is much bigger than compared to say for example, my ITTC spectrum. This might be the ITTC spectrum, this will be John Swap. Why I mention is that because John Swap spectrum turned out when you collected data there, it, it turned out that there is a tendency for wave of one particular length to be much more number. So, it is what is called picky spectrum, very much picked up. 
see in this one ITTC spectrum the number energy of waves of this uh, frequency and this frequency it is maximum no doubt but it is somewhat spread but in this one you have got much more waves of only that particular height. Why it becomes important we will see afterwards that if you have a structure which actually behaves badly in this wave then it obviously it is going to behave very badly in John's wave spectrum. That we will discuss when we talk about shape behavior in waves. Okay. I just want to mention this because of its historic importance this John's wave spectrum. The second point is that now that I know SW by a formula, this is a Rayleigh distribution. It turns out that if so, you can find out every possible statistical property based on this SW equation. You, for, you can find out number one, what is the probability of wave height exceeding so and so? What is the probability of a given wave height, the probability of say H exceeding certain given? What is probability of H occurring once in 1 in 100 years? Oh, this is too small, but uh, you can just note my word. You can find out every possible statistical parameters like chances of wave not occurring less than this, more than that, periods and so. What is the chance of a return cycle of a given wave? That means uh, after how many cycles statistically one particular height will repeat? What is the maximum height expected in 30 years? What is the maximum expected in 100 years? Everything can be found out from this formula if you assume that to be a Rayleigh distribution, you know all statistical property becomes available. This is what we do. Therefore, see things become simple from our point. If we can get an HS significant height and TP for a C state, for a given C state I go to HS and TP, then I go to the, I choose an appropriate spectrum formula. Once I choose that, I can find out every parameter, what is the chance of, you know, a wave height exceeding so and so. Afterwards, we will see that what we will want is not the wave height exceeding so and so, but perhaps what is the response exceeding so and so. Wave height also is important because suppose I find out uh, as an example an offshore structure, I find out that the chances of a wave height exceeding, uh, no, the chances of maximum wave height occurring once in 100 years is equal to say 20 meter. Okay. Then obviously what I will do, I will design the structure so that it can survive up to 20 meter high wave. You see, this is how the statistics come. You cannot design for infinite time. You have to go statistically. So there is statistically a probability of what they call return cycle. So suppose once in 100 years means you can break it in seconds and if the wave is 10 seconds, so you know that after so many cycles this wave gets repeated. So the, let us not go into that detail because we do not have so much time, but uh, just the point is important that all statistical properties, everything that you may want to know ever for design becomes known. This is a short term statistics, there is one more thing I should mention here, what is called long term statistics. See here in the short term what happened, I knew HS and I knew TP, but how do you know that this HS will occur, see 3 meter of HS will occur. So what happened, people actually have been taken for 30 many years data and they have got a table here that occurrence of HS and TP. That means number of observation, they have found out that number of observation the time that TP and HS occur is so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, etc. You see given example say 5 here, 2000 like that. There is a joint probability distribution found out by means of number of occurrence. See you have taken 30 years data, so you found out that this much of HS and this much of TP occur 20 times, this much of HS, this much TP occurs 200 times, so this is 20, this is 500. So there is a table full of numbers simply telling the number of time this significant wave height have occurred in a given location. Now tomorrow therefore you can find out what is the chance of my these ages occurring because I have got an out total observation, say total may be in order of 1 lakh of which you found out that 5000 has occurred uh, to observation with ages between 4 to 5 meter. Therefore, the probability that HS will occur 4 to 5 meter is 5000 by 1 lakh. Okay. So now what happened, the chances that a ship is going to encounter a wave of HS 5, um, you know, uh, 4 to 5 meter is going to be that much percentage. See, suppose I design a ship which withstands, obviously I will investigate how it behaves in 1 meter height wave, 2 meter height wave, etc. But then it is not always meeting 10 meter high wave. 
it is meeting 10 meter high wave, say significant high wave, maybe 2 percent of its time, 5 meter maybe 20 percent. So, this is called what is called a long term statistics. In a long term, I can see earlier given HS, given TP, I find out what is the chance of this exceeding something, but here I am going long term. I am trying to find out what is the in 30 years chances of percentage of time HS may occur. You get my point, no? This is just to give you a brief idea, this is how the oceanographers go. See, let me give an example. We are designing a ship to go from here to let us say Singapore. So, it goes through a certain sea and let us say I have data for that particular sea. Now, I find out that in that sea, chances of HS occurring 8 meter and more is only 2 percent, 6 meter to 8 meter is maybe 20 percent, 4 to this is so many percent. Now, for each one, I will find out, see for 8 meter is certain percentage. 6 to 8 is certain percent. Now, for each one I find out what is my response, say role, it, this if 8 meter uh, uh, wave occurs, my role becomes say uh, 15 degree. See, if this occurs, my role make 10 degree. So, I now know that 15 degree of role may occur so many percentage of time, 10 degree may occur so many percentage of time. So, I can find out what is my total probability of certain uh, role occurring, response occurring. Yes, this is the idea because there is two way therefore, the probability. One is that given time the waves are continuously changing. So, I get HS, but then I have taken that data today for 2 hours. So, I found HS from the irregular C, but I took it last year, I took it the previous year. So, now I find out from each one what is the chance of HS also occurring. So, you know it is a, it is a, the, so you can imagine this is where the oceanographer and uh, come in, oceanographic it is a huge amount of data. Each point long data, you have to do it for many times, many years and statistically analyze. All we need to do is that we have to find out uh, uh, in a given ocean, what is the chance that the ship will not uh, exceed or will be within certain operation limit. Because from that you can figure out, suppose you say that the ship roll exceeds 10 degrees and you say that if it exceeds 10 degree, you cannot do an operation. So, you can find out the down time. In offshore structure, if it heave is more than certain time, say 4 meter, then it cannot operate. So, you find out that the chances in this sea in a long term that the heave will exceed 4 meter is equal to 20 percent. So, you say I have 80 percent, you know, op operation time, 20 percent down time. Like that we go. Uh, as last small thing that I want to mention is that in this case, I took all the waves coming from this spectrum one side, all these were added together to find out this spectrum. Okay. This is what we call 2D or long long crested sea, because what happened in here, if you stand here, I mean in a, this thing, these waves are crest is long along the x axis, I mean the waves are going this, all of them are going in one direction. So, on the crosswise y direction, the crest is continuously long, because here the, this spectrum was based on the assumption that we have done in the previous class. We have added all the waves, but all the waves that were added were all in the same direction. But in reality, waves can come from this direction, can this direction, can this direction, can this direction. So, now if you make a more complex picture, that means if you want to say that the wave that I have got at point A is not only because of all waves coming from direction 1, but also from all waves from direction 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. So, in other words, if I assume that a particular point, the waves that are coming are all waves in one direction, all omegas, but also all omegas from all thetas. So, it becomes a more complex uh, analysis that means, you also find out the directional spreading. So, what happens, you see it is go, goes something like that, that you assume that supposing all waves came from one side, it would be like this, spectrum would become like that. But now, this is when all the waves are coming from this direction, but if all the waves are coming from this direction, all the waves come from this direction, etcetera, it will be something else. Here what we do, you assume that as if some waves are coming from this direction, some of the energy is because of waves coming from this direction, some from this direction, some from this direction. So, it, it you can imagine that it is something like this curve is being rotated like a bell curve, like this curve will be rotated here, rotated here. It is difficult to, yeah. So, it is like a graph where you are just rotating it, but you see if the now, now there is an interesting point. Suppose wind blows this side, 
we would expect most waves to be on this side, but you will also expect waves from the other side, but to a less extent. Ultimately, you will expect almost 0 waves from 90 degree angle. So, this is how this idea of what is called 3 D or they call short crested C or short crested spectrum, where what they do is that what we assume is that look the energy of all the waves are not only coming from direction 1, but from all direction. However, the directional spread this is called spread is diminishing from the main direction and it will go to 0 as we go down. So, typically what they do S 3 D omega is written as S 2 D omega into uh, this is actually omega and theta because it is a function of both into one spreading function. Typically what we represent is that we say that the 3 dimensional C is 2 dimensional C multiplied by a spreading that means there is a 2 dimensional C when theta equal to 0 some value theta equal to 10 degree some other value and as it goes to 90 degree it becomes 0. So, f theta becomes what this is called spreading function. I will give an example of the spreading function here. And it okay. Now, here f theta one of the typical f theta value is for example, 2 by pi cos square theta. If you see that you will see that f theta becomes 0 as theta becomes 90 degree. And if you integrate f theta d theta over this angles actually minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 this will become plus 1. So, what this is very interesting because what happens see s 3 d I will very briefly tell this s omega into f theta. See remember that area under that see area under this area under this, see now this is my spectrum. So, if I integrate that and integrate that and integrate that okay. what happens this represents area under the spectrum. Now, the area under the spectrum represents the total energy that has been transformed to the wind. So, the energy is constant now see the entire energy might have gone to produce waves only in direction 1. But you can also assume that look this entire energy is spread some part of it is actually producing waves in direction 1 and some another part is in direction 2 etcetera. So, integration of this which represents energy always must remain constant. So, this must be equal to this, but then this is I have done where also represents the energy same as the 2D spectrum. So, this integration must be equal to 1 see then this condition gets satisfied this is a basic philosophy actually what I am trying to say ok I will give an example numerically may be easier. So, let us say this energy is equal to 100 unit ok. Now, this 100 the total energy is 100 unit of waves. So, now supposing I assumed all these energies coming from direction 1 then my 2 dimensional thing would have been 100 unit. But what we do is that we say this 100 unit is spread there is 100 units this would be 100 units coming all waves in this direction, but I am going to say that this is equivalent to 80 coming from here uh, or say 60 coming from here say 20 coming from here 5 coming from here 2 here like that. So, that this sum of this 60, 25, 2 etcetera will become equal to 100 ok. This is called directional spreading. Now, by doing this formula we find out an f theta where this sum becomes remains 100. I, I give better example of, of this here. See uh, this book. Let me draw in this way. See, this is my spectrum in two dimensional. And as you go, if you draw a spectrum, like if you actually, it is very difficult to draw. If you spread it, it becomes a bell curve. Now, area under the bell curve should be equal to area under the spectrum because area under the bell curve here represents same thing as a total energy. All thing is that earlier I had this bell like that I said all the energy is contained within all waves in one direction I now only am saying is that look it cannot be so the same energy has to be spread. How, do, how does it get spread? It is spread such that in some fashion the total energy still remains constant. So, here you know now the, the spreading function tells us that look maximum will be always on this because the wind is blowing this side and you expect that as it goes there will be less and less energy from more and more direction ultimately 90 degrees should be 0. This is what we are doing. So, you are pulling it down here 
and spreading like you are, you are something like you know I, I can give an example in a graphic form like if there was a graph there you push it down and kind of like like a cake there you pushed and made a, made a pyramid. See like there was a small piece of you know like two dimensional body was there this is this area was this thing you just pressed it and made it made a bell made a made a pyramid you know see, <laughs> see you had a two dimensional big thing you pressed it and make it spread over. So, that the same energy is there the volume is same, but now it is spread and the, as you go away from the, the main direction obviously, the energy is less ultimately 90 degree is less 0 because see if the wind blows from this side you do not expect any wave from this side. So, maximum wave will come from this side little less here little less here little less here ultimately 0 here and no waves of course, coming from this side because winds are in this way. When you have this representation this is what is called a short crest C. Because when you the reason I mentioned that is that again therefore, it has become algebra S 3 D it becomes simply S 2 D into F theta. Now, this is depends on this depends on only H S and T this is only theta. So, you see although when you have gone to open ocean you find out waves are all kind of irregular and there are no crest there it is all you know random the full thing can be nicely represented by knowing only the significant height peak period and spring function which is known. So, although it is very confusing as I said even the two dimensional is confusing 3D is even more, but it can be broken down to nice comprehensible very easy algebra. This is what I want to say here uh, as far as the wave is concerned and 3D part ok. This is very simple if you want to uh, apply. Uh, what happened in the uh, what they call confused or irregular C actually I, 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 I am fond of saying that this is the least confusing part. If you keep if you once we get in the class the, the algebra uh, uh, straight it is pure algebra there is no knowledge just algebraic breaking down. Yeah, yeah see it is ok see S 3 D has a function of omega into theta because it will depend on see the value of this will depend on any omega and any theta because you see it is it is a, it's a bell curve. So, you have got a bell there is a line here there is a line here line here line here line here it has got it is a bell. So, everyone you know like like a like a at every omega and theta you have a value up value ok this is like that how to find out that value that is found out by taking S 2 D into omega multiply f into theta. So, for that given omega you know S 2 D that that is actually the bell curve that original bell curve, but multiply that by an f theta that means you you are lowering it down actually. See f theta will be actually a function which will obviously become as theta uh, goes to 0 uh, 90 degree becomes 0. So, it is just a number. So, you are just as if you are pulling this down as if this graph is pulled down as you are spreading it. If you see the picture is very simple actually there is a line you know this is a video class we have problem of showing this demo you have this line here you know this line is here and I as I, I spread it and pull it down see I have I show you here this is my spectrum here as I shift it I just push it down like that that is all I mean I have a graph here I I pull it down and spread it and as 90 degree it has become 0. And now, this graph that I have got exactly having the same area as the first graph meaning that the energy of the wave is exactly same. So, it is something like I have an open ocean this is one square one meter square area. So, all kind of waves are there I know that the energy of that it must be constant either now I can think it is all the waves are coming one side, but I can say the same energy is spread or shared by waves from all directions this is what I have done first place I say that all the energy shared by all waves from one side, but now I said all the energy is shared by all waves from all sides. However, sides are having a bias because you would expect more waves from the side wind is blowing less waves from other side you know you cannot expect there are wave coming from this side as well as from this side because opposite side will you know cancel each other ok. So, I think this is where I am going to end uh, so called my uh, description of uh, uh, irregular C. Uh, so, what we have done is regular C description, irregular C description. Regular C was a simple sign curve, irregular C is nothing but sum of those sign curves that is all. Now, what we have to know 
is coming to the more topic. Now we have to bring the ship in and put in the ocean. So obviously the first step is in regular wave and in fact we will find out that this is the, the most difficult task, task. So I have got now a sine wave coming, I have got a ship here, I just want to know how it moves up and down. Wave of period say 10 second with height 5 meter, I want to know how much the ship would respond. If I can find out, later on I can say that the spectrum is nothing but so many waves, so I can also add the response like that, that is more simple part. So before going to that now we need to uh, now first define the ship motion. The first thing would be definitions. This it, it appears very simple to all, I tell you it is not always that simple because what we know layman is okay, I mean you know, in a layman's term is fine but there are some assumption inherent to that which we do not tell, okay. Say now let us say that we take a ship here, I am just following this book here. We are going to use this uh, kind of uh, you know say x body here, say y body here, this is it. This is maybe g here, the center of gravity here, etc. See, Everybody knows, I mean I am just showing a shape here with some axis, you can say typically when you did hydrostatics and all, we have fixed the axis along the length direction, that is longitudinal axis xb on the body, uh, you know transverse axis yb and zb I am calling it, that is a, an axis of the body. Obviously everybody knows that the mo linear motion here is called surge, this is called sway this is you know up and down motion, this up and down motion, this up and down motion is called heave, okay. That I think all of us know, then this is see x1, many ways of putting, I can say this will be axis 1, axis 2, axis 3, then along 1, 2, 3 is surge, sway, heave. Now about 1 that is this motion is roll, then this one is pitching and this one is yaw. So you can say surge, sway, heaver, linear, along x b, y b, z b and roll teach yaw is angular motion about same three axis x b, y b, z b, okay. So there are three, now we, we, we are using right handed co coordinate system, remember that angular motion means when I say about x b that is clockwise direction, that is you know this way, if you axis is there, this, this axis is there means going like clockwise direction. You have to remember that because otherwise in the calculation we have make mistakes, you know that axis. Therefore, it is here means this way, here means this way. That means you see bow down is pitch positive in this and here it is this, uh, I mean going on the what you call port side is a positive yaw angle. This is what, this is very simple, all of you know that but now there is a problem. The problem is that when I want to observe the shape from a fixed axis, I am going to show this is not this x, this x b y b z b continuously changes. What happened in a, let me give an example in a wave the ship is at this moment like this. So my x b is this side, z b is this side. So should I call this, this motion heave or should I call the vertical motion heave? See the question comes of the axis. You see, and I mean this one I, 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 I want to say this one very clearly to you. So suppose at some point the ship is like this, at some point of time. Now my x b was this way my z b is this way. So is, is this heave, if this is heave, next instance the shape is like that, then next instance this is going to be heave. So the heave direction will keep changing, say so today you call this heave, tomorrow this is heave, every instance the heave direction can roll also same thing. So you understand, this is an important point we have to understand at the beginning because we, we always tell ship is heaving 4 meter, which is the axis. 
if you say the axis what I just defined as a body fixed axis, the body is changing uh, continuously. So, my horizontal is changing. Take a submarine, it can dive here like that. Okay. So, will you call this to be hip or the vertical to be hip? Right. So, but that is okay, even then, no, okay, okay, fine. Axis fixed to the body, there is a shape here, it is uh, the, the submarine is diving like that. Axis is fixed to the body, this x is this z. You are calling the motion along z axis is to be hip. Will you call now this is my vertical, remember, this is my water, water surface. Will you call but this to be hip? Yeah, but will you call this hip when you say the ship is heaving? You see that if you call it hip, the next instant the ship is changed uh, this direction. So the the motion. No, no, when you say the ship is heaving 4 meter, okay, what do you mean? It is, see in this case the heave axis is continuously changing to this side, this side, this side, this side like that going. So, which one is you call heave? When you say 4 meter, it is on this 4 meter because it is not change, fixed here, it is continuously changing. See, understand when, when you are saying roll also, roll you say about this axis, but you know the ship may be actually always at about some, no, it, it may be actually like this position and then rolling uh, some angle or it can be actually about this position and then having 10 degree. They are not same, especially pitch is not same thing, especially pitch in a typically say submarine kind of case, you know, will you call, uh, I mean, uh, this to be pitch or this to be, I mean, the, the, the ambiguity will come, which is axis? You would want, for example, let us take a simple case, you would want the motion along the vertical axis to be heave, let us because heave is more commonly known. But if you fix along the ship axis, then it is not that the z motion z b is not always vertical, it is changing. Okay. So, therefore, we need to have some more uh, generalization of definition, it is not same. Second thing is I can tell you the axis, supposing I put this as an axis and I put this as this thing and tomorrow you decide to put this as an axis you know I would like to another color. Now you see this is my one axis, this is my another axis. Now if you define motion about this axis and rotation about this axis as heave, pitch, roll, etc. and he decides that I am going to use this to be the axis, will you get the same roll? When you say 10 degree roll, he is thinking that it is rolling about this axis going through this and I am thinking it is about this axis. So again there is another ambiguity, you have to first define the axis, then define that I am going to tell about this axis, this motion is rolled pitch here. Okay. So, you cannot say just, you know, in a, I am taking a very strict sense, we will find out that when the motions are small, the distinction is not there. Okay. But if you want, you know, from the beginning a very strict sense, you have to first define the axis, origin of the axis, then tell that about this axis, this motion I am going to call heave roll and pitch. So, okay. so therefore, now comes this uh, the game that for a shape it turns out there are three axes that you have to introduce typically. One axis would be what you call, uh, okay, I am going to use this way only, this. This I am called inertial axis or earth axis say. That is fixed on the earth, okay. Now, I will have another axis fixed on the ship, but parallel to the earth axis, x, y, z, o. This axis o, x, y, z fixed on ship, but parallel to that means this distance actually is u into t that velocity into time, you know it is it is spreading. Now, there is a third axis which is my body axis. This is my what I call early actually I, I you know I can call a separate point g here g x b y b z b. This is my this g x b y b z b is my body axis. So, strictly what we will do is that we will be calling the motion about the this axis to be the search, sway, roll, heap, pitch, yaw, etc. as far as ship is concerned on the assumption that the motions are small amplitude. This is what we will 
see that the debate can go on for a long time because it turns out it is not very simple. But for all definition it turns out that if suppose now motions are very small, then the difference between x b y b z b and x y z becomes what is called I you know I I am fond of using the word too small, you know like small into small makes it too small is very small, too small what is called second order quantity. So, the difference between the two diminishes if you are assuming that the motions are of small amplitude. Okay. In other words, I will write if between O x b oh sorry x b y b z b and x y z is too small. Actually, you know epsilon into epsilon it is order of what you know mathematically it is what is called it is a second order quantity you know if there is a small thing the difference is small into another small makes it small square see 0 0.01 into 0 0.01 makes it very small you know like that. We need not worry about that, but if you want if somebody was very rigorously mathematical the consistent then it one can explain. Now, we will define for us the motions Oh, sorry x y z. That means, it is about an axis which is fixed on the shape, but not rotating just translating that means, it is see the shape is like that, but the axis remains like this shape is like that, but the axis remains like this. The axis is going with that shape, but not fixed on the shape see axis originally is fixed on the shape. So, only the g point is fixed on the shape again they are the origin now most convention earlier there was two things one was to use see this is the water line here this is water line you know earlier days people were using it this g here some people used to use a point just above lcg but at the water line level this o as origin that was the old convention but nowadays it is more conventional to use g as the origin Yeah, parallel to the water line. Okay, this diagram again I will draw a little bigger. See now convention wise, this is a ship here. Let us say this water line, okay. Fish at the part, so you know that this is water and here. So here some people used to use this, this is L C G G point. At one time this was used as the origin, but that was uh, more earlier literature. Uh, nowadays, it is more convention to use this as origin. Both can be calculated, but you see the question is that normally the difference between the two because this distance is small will not be very small. So, there are programs where you can calculate the motion based on this or based on this there will be some extra terms coming. However, that is not the point you can calculate but the results that you produce should be specified with respect to the uh, axis because you first you will say that look I have taken g as an axis and based on that my motions are this degree that degree that degree. People do not say that reason reason is because the differences are too small especially practical people you will never uh, tell some uh, hear somebody saying g and all it says ship rolls 10 degree that is all is not it. I mean people will say ship is ro ro rolling badly or it is heaving badly that is what we will tell because the distinction the difference between this this becomes very small in a practical case. See when you take uh, give an example this case we took all always like this, but we did not understand that actually if you want to do that the ship you know it, it was not here, but it was somewhere here therefore, the ship had, had to be actually pushed up. So, when it rolled it it automatically underwent and heave and when you did that you see about which point I rotated I do not know if I rotate about this point then the ship orientation look something else. If I rotate about this point the orientation will look something else. See uh, simple example if I rotate about this point the shape would look like that. If I rotate about this point it would look something else. See it would look something like uh, this is not it. So, it is location in space actually differ depending on about which point you are uh, you are um, sort of turning. 
But however, what happened in both cases see the angle is 10 degree. So, normally we say that okay, it has hip 10 degree, but if you want to see the complete story, it has hip 10 degree also pitch so and so, because I want to find out in uh, way where it, it exactly it is look, what space it occupies that does not become unique. So, if you want to numerical simulate, say you have a simulator, then you know if you do not say the axis, it will give you 10 degree roll, but it may not be the exact location where it is supposed to be. So, in one case you may see that uh, that uh, you know site say bank, another case depending on that you do not see it. So, what I am trying to say uh, in short is that the, uh, the space that the ship occupies uh, you know in space or the place that it occupies in space you know exactly say this is a 3D space where it is exactly located with respect to a frame that will depend on about which axis you are rotating. See I can rotate 10 degree here, but I can also get the 10 degree here, but these two are not same. So, if you want to be very exact that is why when you want to do simulator where all the 6 motions are necessary axis is important, but in a layman when you just say the 10 degree rotation you simply say the 10 degree rotation because it could be here it could be here, but in shift motion we should be more strict because it is it can be coupled one can induce other. Okay. Uh, so, this is the part I will uh, we have another 5 10 minutes. See now another thing that is most important that is we have to discuss immediately is called. So, this part that we know that we are now calling that that motion encounter frequency. Some people call it frequency of encounter. What is this? See a very simple example. Now, I have got a wave coming this side and I have got a ship moving. Let us see. I mean I am giving a simple example. Now, you see you are standing here. Now, you find that suppose the ship was not moving. Let us say the ship was not moving. The ship this period is 10 second. What it means you will find that a crest has passed you say at this time next one will pass you after 10 seconds. Okay. So, if you suppose when the crest comes here there is a force impulse some kind of impulsive force. So, that is occurring every 10 seconds, okay. but now what happened that is when the V is the ship is 0, but now you started to move. So, as this crest begins to come you are actually moving into it. So, you now meet a one crest at say at now after 8 second by the time the crest has moved 8 second you have moved actually into the wave and you have met the next wave. So, you now begin to hit the next waves at every 8 seconds or so, not every 10 seconds. Okay? We are also going into the wave. Yes, if you now if you are going into the wave, if you are going away from the wave that is a different thing, but I wanted to tell you is that depending on the relative speed between the two, you end up meeting the waves different. In other words, if you are standing here, you are you know if you are on the ship you are standing here, you know the observation point here. To you the waves would not appear to have 10 seconds, but some other period because you are moving into the waves, you are a moving frame of reference and the wave, the ship, the kind of excitation it experiences would be at that period. Why? See this I tell uh, always that what is happening to the ship as the wave passes by every point gets a pressure, each pressure you add up you get a force. Okay? We have say, told earlier that all the pressures or every quantity is having same period of 10 second because you know everything is sin omega t that makes sense because see when the wave is passing by this point there is a pressure when same pressure will be repeating after 10 seconds. So, the net force also will be periodic with the same period because you know see here there is a pressure points. Now, the same thing repeats exactly after 10 seconds. So, it will it is repetitive after only that period, but in this case now it is repeating after 8 seconds or whatever seconds because you are now going into it. Therefore, the ship gets a kind of if I think a ship getting a push it is earlier it was getting a push at every 10 seconds, but now it is going to get a push at every 8 seconds. This is what we call encounter frequency. You take another case of opposite case, the waves are moving and you are also moving. In fact, if you know I just draw this outside say it may happen that the wave speed and your speed is exactly same. If you stand here you will you will not feel that you are moving there is any wave. You will think that you are stationary because you look at the outside and you see the same crest is right here I am moving along with that, 
So no impulsive force comes on you. So you do not feel the uh, kind of uh, excitation. So there a, 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 a frequency of encounter becomes so called period is 0. So this is called encounter frequency which is very critical because the period at which the ship uh, experiences excitation is not the period of the absolute wave but because uh, the, the, but something else as observed by a moving ship. So we have to first come with a formula for what is that uh, that period. Okay. So if the waves on the ship are moving at about the same speed, then there will be no encounter at all. Exactly. There is now you know that this is there is no encounter at all. This is the most interesting part now since we this lecture of few minutes I will discuss that little bit uh, just spin. This is a, this is the most dangerous and most important situation that comes. You are moving this side, waves moving this side, you are very happy. You think that it is like hydrostatic, nothing is happening. But you know this point water is moving, you are moving and there is basically no grip. And it is this is a case uh, um, what is called following waves where ships capsize having high roll because it is just like you are trying to walk on a skate. You try to walk on a floor which is very, very smooth. So you walk but the relative speed is 0. So you fall because there is no grip. Or you can try to walk on that thing where the floor is moving, you are also moving same speed. You see or it is the experience of trying to uh, drive on a ice rink. Uh, we in Canada we used to do that. No grip. Just like that it is if you relax seeing that there is no waves, you are going to capsize. It is the most dangerous situation of, of following waves, uh, parametric resonance. This we I will discuss that uh, uh, later on. This is a normally this is what is called a resonance a large oscillation of roll motion and there have been accidents for that. Anyhow today uh, this lecture I will end here. We will do in the next lecture. We will pick up from this point. Thank you. This you did not hear it. Now we will we'll talk about, um, okay, see we will continue our discussion on ship motion in regular wave. We will come to that uh, uh, little later. First let us now uh, Let us now did I try to derive a formula for frequency of encounter. See, we know from regular wave C was given by omega by k given by lambda by t. Okay. Now let us take a case ship is moving like this. Okay. And uh, the waves are moving in this direction. See this is my V, let us say this is my wave speed, uh, I think I should have taken another color. See uh, this, I do not know that this diagram might have become little small. Let me, let me try to explain. There is a ship here. What happened is that this ship is moving in this direction, speed V. Waves are coming in this direction with angle C. And we are going to call actually the, uh, the you know, vectorially, vectorially the angle between this V vector and this vector to be equal to mu, the heading angle actually, you see. So this is my one vector bar, C. Uh, this is my v vector and this is my c vector. Okay? So v to c we are going to call that is uh, uh, you know from this other axis to be mu angle. Okay? Now what is happening is that or 
all expressible in terms of those basic parameters and they are also a sinusoidal function and any sine function the unknown thing is only two one is the amplitude one is phase oh, so our so therefore suppose i want to find out for a ship let me ex ex give an example i want to find out you want to know what is my acceleration there is a deck crane here you want to know what is my acceleration at this point if i want to know that point acceleration i actually know it is sinusoidal function i will know everything every time every instant what is the value of that acceleration provided i knew such sway roll he i mean those six motions and the location of the point of course the location is a geometric parameter so i would know why we say that is because it turns out that ship motion therefore is primarily dependent on those six primary motions so our biggest challenge would be to find out those motions once you find it out those motions the 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 complication is maximum to find out those motions. So, I just write the sum to summary. Find that is, you know, surge, etc. Here. What do you find? Find amplitude plus phase. So, if you can find this. You can combine these all together, get what you want. I will write that way. You see, by you mean the wave angle. yeah, no, not wave angle. The difference, the difference between when it is occurring, when it is occurring with respect to the wave, the when it let me say when it is occurring with respect to the wave. If you know that the rest part is pure simple algebra. So, what I will stop here because I want to now obviously knowing that we have to figure out how we can find the basic motions. That is the most biggest challenge which we do not see as a practitioner uh, you know most practitioner will be bothered about this because what you want is what is ultimately you are interested. But to get from here to there is actually algebra simple algebra to get to this point is the most difficult point you know, but here to here is absolutely simple algebra, it is just question of uh, two more pages of just doing one plus, it is like if you have to add 10 tables in a figure, it is just tedious but nothing brainy. Thank you.